The pageant is a dry run to an international competition, and the same hectic pace is kept for a 10-day period. Let's take a look at the week's highlights. From the Manila Diamond Hotel, official residents of the Binibining Pilipinas candidate. Screening over 90 applicants produced 38 lucky ladies who checked in the following day to start the competition. Right after that, they met Mr. Vic Valenciano for a photo session. Of course, no matter how busy they were, such beautiful girls wouldn't forget something as important as exercise. The 38 girls stopped early morning traffic along Rojas Boulevard when they went jogging in their official Binibining Pilipinas t-shirts. After a brief rest for lunch, it was off to the Araneta Coliseum for rehearsals. The next day dawned bright and sunny. Perfect weather for the girls in their Catalina swimsuits, who spent the day at the Manila Yacht Club taping the swimsuit portion. That night, 13 contestants sang, danced, and even chopped their way through hollow blocks at the Amethyst Room of the Manila Diamond Hotel. All for the honor of being judged Miss Talent. The full side of the Manila Diamond Hotel was the scene of the press presentation. Despite the beautiful backdrop made even more beautiful by flowers from Azalea, the press corps had eyes only for the 38 contestants. Having faced the critical scrutiny of the press, the contestants now had to face the even more careful assessment of the executive committee of the Binibining Pilipinas pageant and the PRC screening committee which was given the task of selecting Miss Sunso's beautiful hair, Miss Lux, and Miss Close-Up Smile from among the contestants. The contestants also found time for a store visit to the landmark in Makati. Lunch was pizza at Pizza Hut Greenbelt. After lunch, the contestants got ready for the motorcade. Of course, keeping them beautiful throughout the activities, makeup by Orlan and hair by Reve. Then, it was off to the motorcade around the Araneto Center. No Binibining Pilipinas pageant is complete without a charity day. Each girl played big sister to a group of orphans, taking them on the rides at the Fiesta Carnival. The next day was tension-filled for the girls as they went through intense screening during the pre-judging. And finally, a reminder that the big day was just ahead. The candidates were fitted with their evening gowns, made by the country's top couturiers. All in all, the past two weeks were something which, win or lose, none of the contestants are going to forget. It will take home the official swimwear by Catalina, their designer shoes from Zenko Footstep, Assorted sun protection products from Copper Tone and Philippine Refining Company makers of Lux, Poso, and Sun Silk. Special awards and prizes include a sash, a plaque, and 10,000 pesos for the best in swimsuit, courtesy of Catalina Swimwear, now exclusively distributed in the Philippines by Uniprom Incorporated. A sash, a plaque, and bouquet for the best in long gown. A sash, a plaque, and bouquet for Miss Friendship. For the talent competition, the second runner-up talent will receive 1,500 pesos in cash. The first runner-up talent will receive 2,500 pesos in cash. And the most exceptional talent will receive 10,000 pesos in cash for sashes and blacks. Miss Photogenic automatically becomes Miss Agfa Color and will receive from Photokina Marketing New Agfa High Definition Color Films, now with even sharper colors. A Minolta Riva 35ST, a compact camera with advanced auto exposure, fully automatic film transport, automatic flash and self time. And a round trip ticket to Hong Kong. 30,000 pesos in cash, all from Agfa Photokina. From Philippine Refining Company, makers of fine personal care products, Miss Lux, Miss Sunsilk's most beautiful hair, 
and Miss Close Up Smile will each receive 10,000 pesos in cash and a year's supply of products. Our title holders look forward to receiving a windfall of valuable prices. Makeup from Orlan Pirates, the official makeup of the Binibining Pilipinas. Orlan, a secret shared by the most beautiful women. Each product acts in the improvement of skin quality because Orlan shares a true passion for the beauty of women. To complement their wardrobe in the international competitions, designer shoes from Zenko Footstep. From Copper Tone, a full range of sun protection products against sunburn and other undesirable effects of ultraviolet rays. Bouquets from Azaleas, the official forest. Slimming and physical training programs from the official figure salon, Slimmer's World. Laurenti, 24 karat gold clad, fashion jewelry to accessorize the wardrobe. Sold through direct sale with 38 service centers nationwide. Our major title holders will get first-class round-trip tickets to their international competitions from Philippine Airlines. From Agfa Color, the Minolto Riva 35ST, fully automatic compact camera, and new Agfa high-definition color films, now with even sharper colors. A set of smartly designed premium quality soft side luggage from Samsonite awaits our Binibining Binipinas winners. Samsonite's ultra-light and profile models combine durability and convenient features to satisfy the traveler's needs, only from Samsonite. Our first runner-up will receive 30,000 pesos in cash, while our second runner-up will receive 20,000 pesos in cash. Miss Tourism will receive 50,000 pesos in cash from the Department of Tourism. Our 1993 Look of the Year Philippines will receive 75,000 pesos in cash and a chance to compete in the worldwide search for the Look of the Year. Finally, Bini Bini Pilipinas World Universe and International will each receive 100,000 pesos in cash, courtesy of Agfa Films and Photokina Marketing. I mean, you've seen the girls in swimsuits, in cocktail dresses, and in their traditional Filipino costumes. Now you'll get to see them at their loveliest. Ladies and gentlemen, we begin the long gown competition. Number one is Miss Sheila May Santarin. Sheila's wearing a Ben Perales Muslim-inspired formal in royal blue and fuchsia, touched with gold print. This classically simple gown by Ben Perales has a dramatic circular shawl called malong. Gold rhinestone earrings for her jewelry complete her gown. That's candidate number one. Sheila May Santari. <laughs> Candidate number two is Farah Tagle. Candidate number three is Myra Macariola. Their one-shoulder malo was the inspiration of the designer Noli Hands to create this beautiful white silk chiffon gown for Myra. The beaded cape flows gracefully at the back. That's candidate number three, Myra Macariola. Candidate number four is Ederlinda Lapos. Ederlinda is in a gold lame and deep violet draped skirt over slim pants with body jewel top. Her designer, Goli Gorospe. That's candidate number four, Ederlinda Lapos. Number five is Joy Sakdalan. Joy is wearing an authentic batik printed inspired gown from Moro Vinta in magenta. 
It symbolizes the bravery of the Muslims. It is also highlighted with gold beads, and it has a matching sarong skirt by Edwin Rivera Abayo. Candidate number six is Cressida Solido Makatangay. A red bustier gown is Larry Assistant's choice for Christina Makatangay. With beaded heavy lace, it is applied with a chiffon cape. Ladies and gentlemen, that is candidate number six, Christina Makatangay. is Daisy Parolan. Daisy is in an enol Muslim inspired gown made of hand woven cloth designed by Wilfred Yee. Ladies and gentlemen, candidate number seven, Daisy Farolan. Number eight is Sharon Sangalan. Sharon is wearing a one off shoulder black velvet gown designed for her by Golly Gorospe. It has a Mindanao bird design on one side with a contrasting malong of bright fuchsia on the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, candidate number eight, Sharon Sangalan. Number nine is Marjorie Alejandro. Marjorie is wearing a flaming red gown with gold trimmings all over. Note that the keyhole neckline for formal coat, when removed, features a very revealing draped jersey gown. Gold accessories complete the attire by Ben Ferales. That is candidate number nine, Marjorie Alejandro. Candidate number 10 is Maricar David. Maricar is in an original design by Goli Gorospe. Of Muslim inspiration, this red draped gown has a mystical veil in red chiffon with gold coins spread all over it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is candidate number 10, Maricar David. Candidate number 11 is Brenda Raquel. Brenda is in a fully beaded off the shoulder beige satin gown with a slit accentuated with pearls. This design is by Ariel Agasang and it signifies the lush vegetation and flowers of the Muslim region. That is candidate number 11, Brenda Raquel. Candidate number 13 is Carlisette Limaandal. Carlisette is wearing a fabulous indigo blue jersey gown with a draped tra strapless top. An antique gold OB piece of geometric design was used for accent in this gown designed by Ben Perales. Ladies and gentlemen, candidate number 13, Carlisette Dimaandal. Candidate number 14, is Marites Pacanza. Marites wears a Muslim-inspired gown with a bolero in brilliant gold, accentuated by draped chiffon on the waistline. 
traces of multicolored bugle beads are scattered all over the bodice. A revealing slip highlights the gown created by Avon Roses. Candidate number 14, Marites Pacanza. Candidate number 15 is Araceli Elaine Macomb. Araceli chose this brown and gold strapless chiffon gown reminiscent of the Tinalak weave, which was designed by Victoria II. Elegant in its sheer simplicity, the gown's lone accent is a wispy scarf to show off her creamy skin. Candidate number 15, Araceli Elaine Mako. Candidate number 16 is Marietta Di Ocampo. Ben Ferales created an elegant flowing monochromatic chiffon from rust cement green for Marietta. This strapless and classic cut long skirt has a shawl-like malong used for accent and trimmed with gold jewels. That is candidate number 16, Marietta Di Ocampo. Candidate number 17 is Angelica Pineda. Angelica is wearing a Golly Gorospi creation in silver and green with body jewel and sarong skirt with a high slit and a neckline sprayed with stones and pearls. Ladies and gentlemen, that is candidate number 17, Angelica Pineda. Candidate number 18 is Hazel Veles. Roniel Belda designed a bustade gown fully beaded with pearls, sequins, and native beads surrounding half the body with a long black cape for dramatic effect. That is candidate number 18, Hazel Veles. Candidate number 19, is Zara Jane Wan. Zara Jane Wan is wearing a Muslim inspired gown beaded in silver and green with a draped skirt and a jacket accentuated with turquoise sarong by Blas Aligno. Ladies and gentlemen, candidate number 19, Zara Jane Wan. Candidate number 20 is Sandrali Lindain. Sandrali is wearing a gold gown with a bustier top inspired by the richness of Mindanao's culture and heritage. The gown is accentuated with capi shell and flowerets, a Blas Eligno creation. That's candidate number 20, Sandrali Lindain. Candidate number 21 is Christina Esguera. Christina is wearing an electric blue and silver fitted gown bejeweled on the top of a Baroque cut out design with a tasseled skirt in silver beads. This is a design by San Danny Santos of Cabanatuan City. Candidate number 21, Christina Esguera. Number 22 is Jeanette Fernando. Jeanette wears a gold mesh gown in see-through tulle with Sulu pearls and beads and a Harlem tulle veil. This is sprayed with gold jewels and is designed by Goldie Gorospe. Ladies and gentlemen, candidate number 22, Jeanette Fernando. Number 23 is Annabella Calupitan. Annabella wears an LD Coronado design with purple sequins and a Muslim brass floral print embellished by gold pearls and gold gems. Ladies and gentlemen, candidate 23, Annabella Calupitan. Candidate number 24 is Lani Marie Tagle. 
Lottie's gown is made of gold satin velvet with black and luminous purple beads. Dangling gold sequins are sprayed down the hemline of this gown. This gown is designed by Bert Balingit. Candidate number 24, Lani Marie Tagle. Candidate number 25 is Maria Lorena Andan. Eddie Escombo is Lorena's designer for this gown. It is made out of red silk with heavily embroidered flowerets beaded with pearls and sequins, decorated with tassels, beads, pearls, and rubies. That's candidate number 25, Maria Lorena Andan. Candidate number 26 is Marie Elizabeth Rodriguez. A dramatic gown in a combination of fuchsia, purple, and emerald green. A Ben Ferales original. Note the classic graceful treatment of her malong draped on her shoulders. This is using a sequence Luray fabric for a very, very dramatic effect. That's candidate number 26, Marie Elizabeth Rodriguez. Candidate number 27 is Michelle Velarde. Michelle wears a malong skirt woven in cotobato. This has gold beads tracing the design. A jewel jacket in multicolored beads finishes a typical Muslim top. Ladies and gentlemen, candidate number 27, Michelle Velarde. Candidate number 28 is Maricel Zafra. Larry Assistant created a Muslim-inspired gown with Vinta colors, traced and accentuated with colored stones worn by Maricel Zafra. That is candidate number 28, Maricel Zafra. Candidate number 29, is Adele Apaya. A black velvet gown embroidered with gold threads using the art of Nouveau pattern of Sarimanok on the edge of the straps and flap plume. A gown by Noli Hands for Adele Apaya. Candidate number 30 is Anna Rochelle Rodriguez. Anna Rochelle wears a fitted bodice embellished with gold teardrops and pearls with high front slit in a dramatic Sinkil inspired gown designed and executed by Nunu Guevara. She is candidate number 30, Anna Rochelle Rodriguez. Number 31 is Jeriza Hernandez. Jeriza is wearing an original Ricky Tevez emerald green gown. This is in silk cashmere with a Georgia chiffon alampay in orange. For highlight, it was splashed with coral aurora burlays and matching earrings. She is candidate number 31, Teresa Hernandez. Candidate number 32 is Heda Advincula. This bustier gown in lavender and in apple green features a multicolored multi printed draped chiffon skirt with matching shawl. Multicolored beads dramatize the effect of the gown. Also executed by Avon Rosses. That is candidate number 32, Hedda Advincula. Candidate number 33 is Anna Marie Gonzalez. A Muslim inspired red lace gown with chiffon draping and a long slit in front is Victoria II's design for Anna Maria.
ladies and gentlemen. Candidate number 33, Ana Maria Gonzalez. Candidate number 34, Vina Conception. The exotic colors of the Vintas of Mindanao, as reflected in this creation by Noli Hands, enhance Vina's felt figure. That is candidate number 34, Vina Conception. Candidate number 35, Mitzi Tan. Statuex Mitzi is dressed by Ben Perales in a dramatic black jersey, draped skirt, with a thigh high slit for movement. For accent, it is a circular shawl-like sarong on one side in bright colors of fuchsia, neon green, and gold. That's candidate number 35, Mitzi Tan. Candidate number 36 is Karen Sanz Espino. A fully beaded black and silver gown with a deep keyhole neckline is Noli Hand's design for Karen. Ladies and gentlemen, candidate number 36, Karen Sanz Espino. Number 37 is Gina Llanos. Gina is in a gown of gold and turquoise, striped lame, encrusted with beaded patchwork, curlics on the Venus neckline from which the drape falls. The skirt is cut way below the hips into which the drape ends. A design by A.E. and John of Dreezy. That's candidate number 37. Gina Llanos. Candidate number 38 is Dindy Gallardo. Dindy is in a gown by Goli Gorospe, inspired from the exotic scenery of Polo Island. It is of silk screen prints traced with beads, pearls, and sequins. Coral copies and shell hang from the edges of the sleeves and the skirt. That is candidate number 38, Dindy Gallardo. Candidate number 39 is Charmaine Gutierrez. Rufa is in a regal white crepe formal, draped by Ben Perales. She has a jeweled pagoda, and it is inspired in antique gold. Pristine white chiffon was used in her veil, held by jewel accessories. That is candidate number 39, Ms. Charmaine Gutierrez. gentlemen, friends, we're now going to find out which of these beautiful ladies projects the best in elegance, poise, and overall beauty. While the judges are making their decision, let me just reiterate that um, candidate number, uh, I believe it's 33, Ana Gonzalez, who won the look of the year, Binibini uh, Pirapinas look of the year, um, is still eligible to win in this uh, particular category. Ooh, I have an envelope. Wow, 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 wow. Best in long gown. You guys are fast. You know, the judges, uh, they look so relaxed, uh, ladies and gentlemen. They, they look really relaxed. I mean, as if they didn't have a hard time at all, huh? They're all smiling. Okay, great. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Bini Bini Pirapinas Best in Long Gown is... <laughs> candidate number 38, Dindi Gallardo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, awarding her is Miss Chiki Brosas, 1975, Bini Bini Pirapinas Universe. Actually, she's me. Miss Chiki Brosas Han. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in a way, these lovely ladies are ambassadresses of goodwill. But one of them will be tasked to dedicate herself for the year to promote the country, winning a 50,000 peso cash prize from the Department of Tourism, and the many travel opportunities that may come with a tourism effort is... Oh, I don't have the envelope yet from SGV. That's right, sorry. Well, we'll be, we'll be seeing them um, soon, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, you know, these lovely gowns, they're so stunning. Can you imagine going on a date with one of these incredibly elegant and beautiful ladies? This is what, uh, you know, I have a, another journalist friend. Uh, she calls this kind of thing DMT. DMT. Don't make tabe. <laughs> because you will look ugly by comparison. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Bidi Bidi Filipinas Tourism for 1993. Are you ready, girls? It's candidate number two, Jeanette Fernando. Crowning her is um, last year's uh, Bini Bini Filipinas Tourism. And, uh, you know, she's now, I, I was going to say Miss, but actually I should say Dr. Milagros Havelosa Lorenzo, Miss Tourism 1990. May I also call Ms. Imelda Kowanko and Ms. Uh, Undersecretary Joseph, Josefina Lichalco to give her the trophy. Filipinas Tourism, ladies and gentlemen, is there to show visitors to our country the beauty of the Philippines. long gown ladies and gentlemen truly outstanding it matches the shimmering crown if you'll notice ladies and gentlemen you're closely at her gown it really matches the crown check it out Congratulations to candidate number 38, Ms. Dindi Gallardo. She was our winner for our Best in Long Gown. And of course, Ms. Tourism, candidate number 22, Jeanette Fernando. 15 semi-finalists for this year's Binibini Pilipinas titles. I'd like to call on Mr. Emilio Semeña of SGV to hand me the envelope. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Semenya. Now I will be calling out the numbers at the bar at random. So until the last girl is called, all of you up here still have equal chances of making it to the magic circle. Are you ready, ladies? Okay, I'm gonna open the envelope. Ladies and gentlemen, in no particular order, candidate number one, Sheila May Santarin. Candidate number 35, Mitzi Tan. Candidate number 20, Sandra Lee Lindain. Candidate number 9, Marjorie Alejandro. Candidate number 6, Maria Cristina Magatangay. Candidate number 39, Charmaine Gutierrez. Candidate number 3, Mayra Macariola. Candidate number 8, Sharon Sangalang. Candidate number 21, Cristina Esquera. Candidate number 23, Alabella Calapitan. Candidate number 24, Lani Marie Tagle. Candidate number 36, Karen Espino. Candidate number 37, Gina Llanes. Llano, sorry. Candidate number 38, Dindi Gallardo. And candidate number 25, Maria Lorena Andan. those beautiful ladies and congratulations ladies well just so you won't think we're being too hard on you we're going to give you a few minutes to compose yourselves before we bring you to the question and answer portion we'll be right back friends please don't go away We are now in the question and answer portion. I'm going to be asking questions of each of our 15 semifinalists, and we'll see how she responds to pressure. I mean, she's facing a huge crowd out here at the Aeronautic Coliseum, and these are not exactly easy questions. Let me start. Let me start over at this end over here, uh, just in case you thought you were gonna be last. Okay. Let me ask you, what is your idea of success? For you, what is success? Well, to have everything you wanted in life, everything that you dream about. But okay, great. Thank you very much, candidate number 20. <laughs> I could ask you one of these questions, but I think the crowd wants to hear a little more. I think the crowd wants to hear... Please, please, ladies and gentlemen. The crowd wants to hear, you know, you're a famous and you're a popular movie and television actress. Why did you want to be a beauty queen? Why did you want to go further and become a beauty queen? Well, ever since I was a little kid, I've always dreamed of becoming Miss Universe. And aside from being a showbiz personality and an actress, I want to expand my knowledge, expand my horizons, and I just want to go on and take the risk. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's for the experience. And I hope tonight, I hope tonight, uh, my dream of becoming a beauty queen will become a re reality. Thank you, candidate number 39. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please, calm down. Okay, let me ask you, why do you think you should win one of the Binibini Pilipinas titles? Well, I think I should win because I have the potential to be one of the beauty queens. I know that I can be, I can be a representative of this country. Thank you very much, candidate number 8. If you win one of the titles, what will you do to promote our country abroad? Well, if I'm going to promote our country, um, I, I think I'll be the best example um, to promote our country. I think... Um... <laughs> um, I let them know that the Filipino 
is known for their ingenuity, craftsmanship, and hospitability, and that they are so friendly. And I think that I'm, I have not only a uh, beauty, but, uh, but also the feeling of a uh, true Filipina. Thank you very much, candidate number 23. What do you think sets the Filipina apart, all Filipinas, from all other women around the world? Could you please repeat? What do you think makes Filipinas special? What makes them different from other uh, women of other nationalities? You can have a moment to think about that. Are you ready? Um, I think they are more conservative, more honest, and more presentable than the others. Thank you very much, candidate number 37. Do I get your number right? Yes. I'm going to choose a tough one for you. You've already won all these awards. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Let me ask you, what for you were your most unforgettable moments during this competition? The day we spent, um, the day we spent we spent the day with the children. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Please, now. We spent the day at the uh, Araneta... Uh, Bidi Bidi Pilipinas Charities took you somewhere? Charity. I love working with children. I love children. I believe that we should... We should... We should... Don't be so scared. You're so beautiful. You're standing, standing up here. Don't be worried, okay? Just tell me. I know the crowd is, is getting unruly. Tell me what you feel. What did you feel that day? The children are our only hope for the future. Thank you very much, Candidate Okay, this one, this one is, you have a choice of five. If you were asked to give up one of your basic senses, sight, hearing, taste, touch, um, what's the other one? <laughs> Smell. Which one would you give up and why? Sense of sight. Why would you give it up? Because I have a beautiful eyes. All right, thank you very much, candidate number 25. All right, ladies, let's have the next batch. Mga kaibigan, pagbigyan nyo naman yung mga iba, no? Maganda naman ang mga sagot nila. Okay? Are we all set? Okay, this one... This one's a question, you know, I'd really love to answer. What if you win the 50 million peso sweepstakes draw that's coming up? Suddenly, all of these people who claim to be relatives of yours that you never met in your life show up. How are you going to deal with them? I'm going to ask for their birth certificates <laughs> to make sure they are really my relatives. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you win tonight, if you win tonight, you're going to go out there. What is the first thing you're going to do? Is it going to be outrageous? What is the first thing you're going to do after leaving the Araneta Coliseum? Of course, the first thing that, that I'm going to do is go to the church and thank God for giving me the opportunity to be the beauty queen. Good answer. Thank you very much. Okay. Not finished, sorry. Because I do believe that it, if it wasn't because of God, it wouldn't win in the contest. Thank you very much. Excellent. This one's a funny question. I think it's easy to answer. If you were to be visited by an alien from outer space who wanted to get to know Earth people, how would you describe to this alien, if the alien asks you, what are Filipinos, what would you say? Well, I tell to the aliens that the Filipinos are a very unique people and I like them. Yes. I know that the Filipinos, the Filipinos have beautiful women, and I think that the aliens don't have. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, 
All right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me go through the questions. Here's your question. What is your idea of a hero today? What, what for you is, uh, in the 1990s, what is your idea of a hero? For me, an idea of a modern hero is, um, let's say, a person who can stand up for himself and also for his family and for the, most of the people. Very, um, very independent. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask you a multiple choice question. You have to tell me why you think this. Why do you, I'm oh, sorry, who do you think is most valuable to society? A doctor, a teacher, a farmer, or a law enforcer? I think teacher, because without the teacher, the doctor cannot be here, and, uh, yeah. She's right. And the teacher is one who, edu who educate the people here around us. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to ask you what you like in a way, you know, this is it's a question of what you like. As a woman, what makes you most fulfilled? My moral values. I believe without my moral values and discipline, it will not make me a complete woman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Boy, I'm running out of questions, huh? I ran out of all the easy ones. No, I'm just kidding. There's some easy ones left. Whew. Okay. This is, just, this is not so hard. If you had the power to change just one event or incident in history, anything, even a small event or a small incident, what would you change and why? I believe that the um, coup d'etat will not be happen. I mean, will not happen, since it will create violence and a lot of people died for that thing. So that's the thing I don't want to happen again. Thank you very much. Good answer. Congratulations. I'm totally run out of questions here. I'm going to stand over on this side here. Okay, 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 okay. This is a pretty interesting question. Supposing you win a dating game and you were given your choice of a date, who among the following would you choose? Maybe you can also tell us why. Michael Jackson, Prince Albert of Monaco, Prince Bolke of Brunei, or Prince, the pop singer? Um, I think Michael Jackson, because his personality interests me. I like interesting people. I learn a lot from them. Good answer. Thank you very much. You know, I'm, I'm really impressed, ladies and gentlemen, with the wonderful answers given by this year's semifinalists. I mean, I thought the questions were tough, but they all came through. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now, what we're going to do next, you know, these ladies are really dying of nerves. They're standing here on the stage thinking, oh, my God, I could win or I could lose. You know, they must be suffering so, so much tension, so much tension. We're going to do something to soothe these nerves, ladies, okay? We're going to ask a very handsome man to come here and relax you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome again, Mr. Jay Kayuka, yeah!
how these girls feel about certain topics and current events. I know that they must have been very, very nervous when they were answering these questions, especially when everybody was, was screaming and yelling and it made them very, very tense, I'm sure. But anyway, um, we wish them luck. Okay, we're back at the Iron at the Coliseum, ladies and gentlemen. The tension is building up as we wonder which of our 15 lovely semi-finalists is going to win one of the three remaining major titles in tonight's competition. You know, the moment of truth is always long and drawn out. I suggest you take another look at our beautiful contestants to see which one of uh, them, or which three of them actually, um, you think should be the winner of the various titles. And as I said before, we have uh, three more titles at uh, stake here, and they are Miss World, Miss Universe, and Miss International. Ladies and gentlemen, we had um, brilliant answers from our 15 uh, semi-finalists tonight. They all came out rather well in the question and answer portion. And we, uh, we continue to await the decision of the judges. The reason we're taking a little long tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is because there have been, uh, or there's been at least one tie. It's been a bit difficult to uh, make up our minds which of these beautiful ladies is the most beautiful. It's very difficult to say. You know what I mean? It's very difficult to say, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to say, by saying that one lady is beautiful, you don't want to say the others are not beautiful, because they are. And all of the ladies who are chosen as contestants in tonight's Bini Bini Filipinas competition, even those who didn't make it to the semifinals, are undoubtedly very beautiful. You know, um, it takes a special kind of girl to get through this competition alive. Not all of them made it through, you know. But um, the guys, uh, I mean the girls who have gotten to this stage, are uh, looking good in their beautiful long gowns. And uh, they've survived all the various portions so far. You know, it's not just a question of marching up on a stage, ladies and gentlemen, and looking pretty. It's a grueling series of different exercises, making the show, making the production, going through all of the motions. There's a lot of stuff that happens in the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, these girls have had very little sleep. These girls have had very little rest, and they've had very little um, comfort, really. Uh, they haven't seen their friends and family for a long time, and still here they are, radiant with beauty, radiant as if they just stepped out uh, of the sea like Venus rising on the half shell. I believe that the decision is uh, on its way. The board of judges is uh, looking uh, particularly uh, happy at this point. And I think here we have it. May I call on Mr. Emilio Semenya of CCIF, Gores and Valayo to please hand me the uh, envelopes. Thank you, Mr. Semenya. Okay, this is the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, let me go to the second runner-up. Our second runner-up is candidate number three, Mayra Macariola. Awarding her is Therese Hilario, 1989 Binibining Pilipinas Maha. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the first run in 1990. Guess what? Is this one working? Okay, thank you very much. I thought my battery died there. Ladies and gentlemen, the first runner-up for the Binibining Filipinas 1993 is candidate number 21, Cristina Esquera. Ladies and gentlemen, the first runner-up position is very important because in the event that one of the, our winners cannot complete her term, the first runner-up may be called upon to take her place. Awarding her is Ms. Lourdes Enriquez, 1987 Binibining Filipinas International. Congratulations. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is the big moment. 
Let me just stress that through the years there's been a lot of controversy about the particular order in which we announce the titles and so on. We want to stress that the three titles that we award on this night are of equal importance. Therefore, we are first going to announce the three winners and then I will announce which titles they have won. Ladies and gentlemen, the three winners. Here we go! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, candidate number one, Sheila Gay Santarin. Candidate number 39, Charmaine Gutierrez. Candidate number 38, Dindi Gallardo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Binibining Pilipinas World is candidate number 39, Charmaine Gutierrez. Candidate, okay, the Binibining Pilipinas Universe is candidate number 38, Dindi Gallardo. And Binibining Pilipinas International is candidate number one, Sheila May Santarin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on stage to crown this year's winners are last year's reigning queens. Please call back our Miss Tourism and Miss Look of the Year 93 to please join the court. Miss Tourism and Miss Look of the Year 93. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the dreams of these winners have come true. And ahead of them are even bigger dreams as they embark on their international competitions. Congratulations, ladies! Thank you all for coming tonight. It's been a wonderful evening. Look at these five lovely ladies.